Hey guys, so today I'd like to talk to you guys about wiring kits. What to look for when you're purchasing a wiring kit and what you should know when you're actually selecting the type of wiring kit you want to purchase. Keep in mind, not all wiring kits are created equal. You do get what you pay for. So let's talk about the wiring itself first. This is something that a lot of people don't know about. So there are different gauges of wire you can buy. Gauge is the thickness of the wire. The smaller the number, the thicker the wire is going to be. So if you buy an 8 gauge and compare it to a 4 gauge, the 4 gauge will pretty much be double the thickness. Then you have 2 gauge and a 0. Those are the main sizes you're going to be dealing with. I prefer to work with 4 gauge most of the time because it will handle up to 175 amps. Most applications that I work with don't require any more than this. So it's, it's still relatively easy to run but it'll handle most of your power needs. Now, if you're running big setups, I always suggest going thicker is always better. Even if your amp only requires to take 8 gauge, throw 4 gauge in there just in case you want to expand on your sound system. But 4 gauge, I find, for most applications, does the job. Now, not all wiring is created equal the way they measure it. So what I've seen in some kits do, they cheap out. Street wires and brands like Stinger don't do this, but see here, here's the actual wiring, then you have your jacket for protection. I've seen some companies where they'll advertise 4 gauge and what will happen is you'll strip the jacket off and it's like 8 gauge inside. So buyer beware when it comes to these things. Stick with good brands like these guys like Stinger and you're not going to come across this problem. But those are things you have to keep in mind. Also the higher end, like Stinger does have different levels. This is their HPM series right here. And the nice thing about their higher end stuff is there's a higher strand count, so you're gonna get better conductivity across it, and it's a lot more flexible, so it's just easier to work with. This is their entry level brand, and it's still good, but the strand, the, the copper that they use just it's a little bit stiffer, and so is the jacket. It's just a little bit harder to work. It's not as nice. So if you're gonna keep your car for a long time and you want to do a nice sound system, I'd pay the extra bucks and get the nicer kit. Your power wire and your ground wire are going to be the same thickness. So remember, you want to always make sure that the power wire and the ground wire are using the exact same gauge because electricity flows. So if you use a thinner ground or thinner power wire, that's going to be in the bottleneck. So if you're using 4 gauge for the power, use 4 gauge again for your ground. Or whatever gauge you're using, just make sure it's the same across the board. Your kit will provide you usually with a power wire and a ground wire like in the Stinger kit. So this gray wire over here is just for ground and this longer blue wire with the sheath over it is meant for power. Now, let's just say that you're confused when it comes to actually selecting the appropriate thickness of wire. Let's just say you're on a budget and you just don't want to buy the biggest kit possible. You just want to get with what's required of the amplifier, but you don't know how to pick it. So what a lot of companies are doing now, because people don't know how to read or find out their amp rating of the amplifier, a lot of the companies now are rating how many watts it can go by because everyone for some reason knows the wattage of their amplifier. But a quick way of knowing of how many amps required from the wiring kit, the need minimum that the amp might draw, is just looking at the side of the amp. Most fuses, I mean most amps will have a fuse on the side. So here we just have a 25 amp fuse. This particular amplifier can't really draw that much. Because after, if you go over 25 amps, it's going to blow the fuse here. What I would do for safety's sake is, if you do run thicker wire, there's no point of having, you know, a 175 amp fuse in there. It'll never blow. So you can step this one down to something smaller. And my truck, for instance, it only requires, it only can pull about 60 amps on my Pioneer amplifier. I, it came with a 150 amp fuse. So what I decided to do is I just put another 60 amp fuse in the front near the battery. But if you have multiple fuses here, what you can do is you just count them. So if there were three 25s, it would equal to 75 amps. That's the minimum that you'll need the wiring to be able to handle. The next thing you're going to come across in your amplifier is a fuse. These should be mounted under the hood. Don't mount these near the amplifier. The closer they are to the battery, the more effective they are. The further the way they are away from the battery, they'll pretty much act like a straight piece of wire and they will not go if there actually is a short. There's different types of fuses available. So we have a cylindrical style here or these wafer styles. These are, you're still gonna come across. I come across these on a regular basis. Um, this is probably the type of fuse you're gonna see more often. All will be available for replacement at your local install shop. So I like to mount these within 12 inches of the battery just to be safe. Some more complete kits like the Stinger Elite series here will come with this little block here. This is a distribution block. 
What this allows you to do is, if you let's say you only had an amplifier that required only 8 gauge wiring for whatever the amp rating was, and you had two of these amps, well, what you can do is you can buy the 4 gauge kit, so you only have to run one amp wire uh, power kit, feed it into this few, uh, distribution block, and then you can split off the power wire into your amplifiers. So you're doing a little bit less work, a little bit of a cleaner install. So hang on to these things, you never know if you need them. They, were, they come pretty handy. Now a lot of kits are going to come with a little spool of wire here. This is only going to be about 16 gauge. This wire's purpose is just to be the remote turn-on wire, so it just needs a ignition source. If you're using an aftermarket deck, it will have an amp turn-on wire. If you're using a stock deck and you have to use a high-low adapter, what you have to do is you'll have to find an ignition source. You can either find an accessory source off the deck, or if it's computer controlled, you're going to have to find out the ignition. So do your research and find out where you need to put this. If you're not attaching this onto an aftermarket deck, if you're going onto factory wiring like the ignition somewhere, I always recommend putting a fuse on it, just like a small 7.5 amp fuse. That's still pretty big, you can even probably go as low as 5 amps on this one, because all it is is just a 12 volt signal to tell the amplifier to turn on. Now that you got your power, you're going to need a signal to tell the amplifier what to play. Again, not all, all RCAs are equal. Sometimes they come in the kit, sometimes they don't. When it comes to if you're installing a subwoofer on a monoblock, you don't need the highest quality RCAs. Because the frequency is so low, it's not going to be that susceptible to picking up engine noise or anything like that. So if you buy a, a basic kit with wiring that's not so shielded and it's not directional, you're totally fine. But let's say that you're installing on a higher end install and you want the best possible sound quality. Well, one, install technique is key, where you place the wires and how you do it. Next is how good of the wiring you're using. So you can have the highest end amplifier, best speakers and everything, but if your, your connection between your head unit and your amplifier is not good, well, you're not gonna get that great of a sound system. So spending money on an amp kit is very crucial. And a lot of people I see cheap out on it because they're like, I gotta save some money somewhere. I would hold out, save a little bit extra money, and buy the good stuff. So this example here, it's really well shielded. So this is great for an amplifier setup where you're hooking it like on a four channel, for example, where you're running your mids and your tweets. And it's also directional. So you are supposed to install this in a particular direction. So this unit, because the direction is going this way, this would attach to the head unit and then the other end would attach to the amplifier. So hopefully that shows you guys what's actually inside an amp power kit and what you should be looking for in terms of what it comes with and what you should be buying for, looking for when you're buying in terms of thickness of wire. If you have any more questions, I just go down to your local install shop and talk to the sales rep, talk to the installers and you know get their opinion on the gear that you're putting in. You know That's what they're there for. Not too many guys do this anymore and you want to talk to the real professionals and they will set you up with the right stuff. You know, that's why they're in business. Hopefully that helped you guys out.